welcome to our new series. It's called Dark Horses. And it, I don't believe that you found uh, this message by Axnan. I believe God wants each and every one of us to hear this message that's from him. That This message lets us know that um, if you might consider yourself a dark horse, if you might consider yourself um, the not the most likely candidate to succeed, that you are exactly the type of person who God has shown himself over and over again to be looking for. I looked up this word dark horse to see what it means in... Um, and the online dictionary describes a dark horse like this. It says, a little known contender who makes an unexpectedly good showing. A little known contender who makes an unexpectedly good showing. That's exactly who God believes that you are. I believe that the reason that you're watching this is because God believes that you are one of his dark horses. You are one of his chosen people to make an impact in this world that maybe everybody on the outside would think that maybe you're not one who would ever make a big difference in his kingdom. But he believes in you. He believes in people like you and people like me who others may have counted out. But God has counted in. God has always been a fan of the underdog, the overlooked, the dismissed and the discounted. These are the dark horses. The Apostle Paul describes us as dark horses even in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. It says it like this. He says, just look at your own calling, believers. Not many of you were considered wise according to human standards. Not many powerful or influential not many of high and noble birth, but God has selected for his purpose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, revealing their ignorance. And God has selected for his purpose the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, revealing their frailty. And I tell you, if God has chosen the weak things of this world, I know for certain that he's chosen me because it's been in my weaknesses that time and time again, God has shown himself to be faithful and God has shown himself to be true, that grace has exceeded far beyond anything that I've ever earned. And, and I hope that you have found that true. And if you have a relationship with Christ, then you have seen it over and over again, how he shows up in our weaknesses. He shows up in our faults and, and he does something extraordinary with our completely ordinary. And I'm launching this series called Dark Horses. This is the week after Easter. Last week we were here at uh, Florence Church and in Florence Church Online. And it was a wonderful week where we had our Good Friday service. And then we had our Easter resurrection celebration. And as I thought about what we, what, what God wanted me to speak about and what we needed to hear, I was actually planning on going in another direction, but God just kept turning me back and turning me back. And I, I just kind of want to follow along with maybe the biggest dark horses in all of the Bible might be these, these 12 guys who Jesus chose to be his disciples. When Jesus went looking for his disciples, he didn't go for the guys that finished at the top of the class. He didn't go for the guys who had the, the best business minds or the best organizational minds, even though he was calling them to be the ones who would take the baton to, to create and lead an organization that Jesus knew would change the world. But Jesus' disciples, they were 
they were common men. Most of them were fishermen. Matthew was a tax collector. As a matter of fact, Jesus caught a lot of flack for having Matthew, the tax collector, being one of his uh, one of his disciples. Matthew was uh, uh, a tax collector, was also called a publican, and they were so ostracized from society, the Jewish people considered them traitors. They wouldn't. They weren't even allowed to testify in court. Um, for uh, their like their testimony didn't uh, didn't count in court if they were testifying against someone because they were the the dredges of society but Jesus still chose this guy to be his his disciple and then i think of you know Peter James and John he he chose them at the side of a fishing bank and I, i'm sure that they reeked of fish but Jesus still said to them come follow me I'll make you fishers of men. But the place where we're picking the story up today, the, the disciples had, they had experienced the resurrected, resurrected Christ. They, they, they had seen him die on a cross and then they had seen with their own eyes that he had risen from the dead. They had shared a meal with him. He, he was physically resurrected not just spiritually resurrected. He was the resurrected Christ, but trying to figure out what that meant for them in that moment must have been very difficult because, you know, they were dark horses. They weren't the ones who maybe the world would have chosen to lead some grand organization that was supposed to change the world. And just like all of us might have been, they were kind of in this moment, this in limbo moment where it's like uh, Christ is risen. We're happy. We're thrilled. Christ is risen. But now what? Have you ever found yourself standing at the crossroads of a what now moment? What now? You know, we, we believe in Christ. We believe he's risen from the grave. We believe that he has saved us. But, but what now? What, what does that mean now? What does that mean right now in the midst of the mess that I'm in? Right now in the midst of the trials that I'm going through? What does it mean right now in the middle of the bills that I have to pay and the children that I have to raise and the job that I have to do and all of these things that are part of our, uh, our own um, normal lives? What now? And maybe, maybe your what now is even... Uh, what now might be coming in in light of a diagnosis that didn't go the way you want or a friend or a loved one that you've lost recently? What is the what now that you're facing right now? See, that's the thing how we know if we're in the middle of one of these crossroads moments. You can't go back to the way things were, but the path forward is unclear. Why don't you say that with me? You can't go back to the way things were, but the path forward is unclear. Have you ever been there? You see, human nature is to do what we've always done. And that's exactly where we find the disciples in that moment. You see, Peter, had, he had known that Jesus had put him in charge of leadership when he was gone. But what he didn't know is if, is if Jesus could even still use him. You know, Jesus had told Peter, Peter was trying to talk Jesus out of the cross. He's saying, he was saying to Jesus, you're crazy. We're not gonna, you're not gonna die on the cross. I'd die on a cross before I'd let you die on a cross. And, and Jesus told Peter, he said, shut up, Peter. You're going to deny me three times before the, before the rooster crows. That means you're going to deny me three times before breakfast. And I'm sure Peter shut up in that moment, but there was no way Peter believed Jesus in that moment. But yet there he found himself. Jesus was at the moment when he needed Peter the most, and he 
denies Christ three times. One of those times, it's even a middle a middle school aged girl who who he denies it, who says, "Hey, he's one of them." She's, he's like, "No, I'm afraid. I, no, I don't know the guy. I don't know the man. I don't know the man. I don't know the man." But even after Christ is raised from the dead, even after Christ reveals himself, Peter's still wondering. I know he's back. And I don't know when he's coming to set up his kingdom, but he sure is probably going to do it himself. He ain't, he, he ain't going to use me. And maybe, maybe you've been to that spot. Maybe there's, I know I've been to that spot. Something I've done or something I said or something I didn't do or something I didn't say or something that makes me feel so guilty that, that I think surely now there's no way God will ever be able to use me. Or maybe you've found yourself in that place in life when you're just you're just done and you're throwing up your hands and you're like, I, I don't even know if I want God to use me. Well, Peter's, Peter is in one of those moments and he's got all these disciples that are sitting around. They're looking at him and they're wondering, what are we going to do next? And here's what the Bible says, Peter, Peter, in all of his great leadership skill, this is the best thing he can come up with. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said, and we are coming with you. So they went out and got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. You see, that's human nature. Human nature is that you're going to go back to do what you've always done. The only problem is you're going to find when you go back to do what you've always done, there, there's no fruit in it. There's no joy in it. There's no progress in it because God's calling you out of what you used to do. As a matter of fact, that's the thing with, with dark horses. God uses where we've been to remind us how far we've come. God uses where we've been to remind us how far we've come. And I have to wonder, while they were out fishing that night, did the disciples think of the first time when they met Jesus? When they first met Jesus, they had come in from a night of fishing when they caught nothing. And Jesus asked, hey, hey, can I borrow your boat? And Jesus borrowed the boat and he went out into the boat and he, and he preached to this great crowd of people. And, and the Bible says it like this in the, in the Gospel of Luke. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch. And Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say, lower the nets again. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And I wonder, as he was feeling all of this guilt and he was remembering the first time that he met Jesus, was he, was he saying, See, Lord, I told you so, Lord. You, you should have listened to me. I said, Go away from me. For I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. But in that very moment, maybe that was the thought that was in Peter's mind as he was coming into the shores and they had worked all night and they had caught no fish. And suddenly, once again, Jesus shows up. You see, God not only uses where we've been to show us how far we've come. 
Sometimes he allows us to see our limits only to make us limitless in him. Because as the disciples were on that boat and they're all asking, what now? What are we going to do now? Is this all we've got left? Are we just going to catch fish until Jesus comes to set up his earthly kingdom? They had, they had no idea what God had in store for them at that moment. But as, as they're coming in from their first night of fishing and they caught nothing, they're pulling into the shore and then there's a man on the shore who just happens to be Jesus. And so Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish to eat along with your bread? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat starboard and you will find some and so they cast the net and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great catch of fish so are you tired are you weary are you beat up are you broken down are you are you at your wits end have you had all you can take and i don't know what your weary about. Jesus wants to speak into our lives right now. He wants to speak to all of us dark horses. And he wants to say, I'm not done yet. I'm still able to work miracles. And I want to work miracles through you. I want to reach people through you. When we feel like God is done with us, we then discover he is ready to begin. And that's exactly what Jesus does with Peter. Peter is the first one who comes to shore and they, they share this breakfast together. And I want you to remember what happens when you're, when you're out in the country, when you're out around uh, farms and fields, when you're uh, around people who might have chickens. And you're having breakfast. What might you be hearing in the background? I can just, I can hear it. I can hear the ocean waves and the crickets. And then off in the distance, the <coughs> of the roosters crowing. And I can just feel that the tension, the flinching in Peter every time he hears a rooster. Because it wasn't only a reminder of him to him that he did exactly what Jesus said. Jesus said, shut up, Peter. You're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. And ever since then, that day, does every time he hears a rooster crow, does it remind him that he's the one who denied the Lord in the moment that he needed him the most? And maybe... I believe Jesus is pulling up to remind all of us dark horses that though we may have given up on us, God has not given up on us. God has not thrown in the towel and said, I'm not going to use them anymore. God is able to forgive the unforgivable, to meet us in the point of our greatest weakness and give us a strength that we never imagined possible. That's why we're dark horses in the first place. We're going to close with the reading of scripture from John chapter 21. It reads like this. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? for they knew it was the Lord. And after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. And Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, 
son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know I denied you, but you know that I love you. You know everything, Lord. You know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And what Jesus was doing with Peter in that moment was he was inviting Peter to invite Jesus into his mess. And Jesus is inviting you and inviting me to invite him into our mess, whatever that mess may be. If it's a mess of fear, if it's a mess of sin, if it's a mess of doubt, if it's a mess of hurt, if it's a mess of broken relationships, if it's a mess of, you can name your own mess. He's inviting us to invite him in so that he can restore us to being all that he's called us to be. Because if we allow Christ into our mess, he will make it into his message. If we allow Christ into our mess, he will make it into his message. We are the dark horses, but we will finish this race and we will finish strong. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus and I ask that you would just that you would just speak to the hearts of the dark horses. The ones who see themselves as not one that you would use to do great things. And I ask you to speak life into them, that you would speak courage into them, that you would speak into their into their heart that wants to give up and say, you can't give up on yourself because I am not giving up on you. God, I know that you never, ever give up on us. I pray for those who are struggling with with sickness, with worry, with fear, with doubt. And I pray for all of those who have found themselves smack dab in the middle of a now what moment. When they're asking, now what am I supposed to do? I pray that you would give clear direction, that you would meet them on that beach of faith and invite them to restore relationship with you, just like you did the Apostle Peter. I thank you for you always do, just as you've always done for me, Lord. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I'm so glad that you've joined us for Florence Church Online. If you'd like to contribute financially to the Florence Church, please visit theflorencechurch.com and click on that little tab that says giving. Again, thanks so much for joining us. God bless you and yours, and we'll see you soon.